out on the sea, searching for something that really found me. I didn't know it, but it drew me to it. Soon I was full of its passion in me. I'm Italo Lavigna. 40 years I've fished the world and have learned it's not just about catching the fish, the size of the fish, or the numbers. It's about appreciating every sunrise and sunset, the smell of the sea, savoring the culture and the fish with friends. Here's the catch. It's the total experience. Presented by Bear Reels, versatile, precision, handcrafted hybrid center pins. Seabreeze boats, tame the oceans. Raymarine Electronics, Raymarine, simply superior. I love to fish in both fresh and salt water out of all kinds of boats and watercrafts. This week, I get to fish out of three different kayaks, both in salt and fresh water. Two with propulsion system and one that's powered by an electric trolling motor. My first outing is with a 13-foot kayak that's ideal for big waters. I'm fishing a large saltwater bay and I'm targeting spotted trout in three to five feet of water, about a half mile offshore. Perfect location to use a big water kayak. I love paddling a kayak, if not fishing, but I have to tell you that when I'm casting in all directions, having a propulsion system is the cat's meow that lets me use both hands to concentrate on fishing while my legs do all the work. You might be wondering, what about steering? No problem. With a retractable rudder that lets you steer with the touch of a finger, you can go any direction you want. All right, first hit. Feels like a nice trout. I was gonna put the anchor in, but I don't think I am. See if I can get that guy to come around. It's where it helps to have at least a seven foot rod to go around the kayak. Look at nice spotted trout. That would be classified as a keeper. That fish is over 15 inches. We're gonna be releasing them all. You know, even though the, the water's dark because it's summer and we've got a, a lot of algae in the water, look at how brilliant. Look at, I'm gonna try to get them close to you. Look how beautiful those spots are. See if he stays on for a split second. Gotta watch the trebles. He's just tagged on there by one little hook. Okay, I got him. Now, can you see those teeth? He's got those little fangs at the top of his mouth. Look at how easy to unhook him. Just one, one hook. Look at, isn't that a beautiful trout? Beautiful spotted sea trout. There he goes. So what I'm doing, I'm actually fishing a very large bay. You can see behind me where the land is. And uh, I'm just casting and using, it's a hard twitch bait and working a bar. Spotted sea trout love to feed on eelgrass bars where there's lots of weeds growing. So I'm only fishing in about two to three feet of water. And some of the bigger trout, when I say bigger, you know, like uh, 15 to 20 inches, especially in this part of Florida, they're single fish. It's the smaller guys that usually school up together. Intercepting sea trout in open water can be tricky. Moving tides triggers their movements and feedings. I landed a nice trout. I keep casting by the tide is going slack and the trout have lockjaw. Time to switch up kayaks and fish the falling tide. Introducing the 10 foot propulsion equipped kayak that's ideal for fishing tight places and quick maneuvering. I like to either use the propulsion system if the water is more than two feet deep, but if I plan on fishing skinny water on the shallower flats or closer to the mangroves, I use the paddles. I got a little snook on. I love the way they get airborne. What you wanna do is hook one that's like over two feet long. Then you get a real fight on your hands. You just nailed that thing. Come on. Are you ready to come in? Gotta be so careful that they don't start head shaking. Yeah. Good. A little snook, but you know, when you're fishing out of a kayak, even the little fish are so much fun. Trying to be as gentle as I can. These hooks are small, but they're pretty sharp. 
I want to make sure he's going to be a healthy release. Look at, they're so brilliant, eh? They remind me so much of our walleye back home. They're just so brilliant with that prominent ladder line. Watch how fast he's going to take off here, because I haven't added the water too long. The water is, you know, quite uh, murky. There, there he goes. Yeah, they're a great fish. So when you're fishing like this close to the mangroves, I like to use a smaller kayak. This is a 10 foot. It's the new Pelican. I love the propulsion system. I've got the paddles, but you know, I very seldom use the paddles. The paddles are more, uh, you know, if I want to get a workout and I'm just uh, beelining it from point A to point B. But you can see it's 10 feet long, really handy as far as, you know, storage and putting even in a smaller vehicle and very buoyant. They have all these sliders, you can see here, um, which is perfect for adding accessories. You can put rod holders, your sonar, um, even a, like a camera, underwater camera, GoPro setup, uh, fish cleaning board, everything. The rudder's right here, which is kind of handy. You can see the rudder moving back there. So if I go to my right, rudder points me that way, left to the left. Um, the seat's really comfortable. I've got my vigorous mat underneath me to keep him even more comfortable. Um, it is fun, you know, because I can get into areas with this right along the mangroves and just sneak up on these fish, just like that snook. Um, and a lot of times it's so peaceful because there's no other boats around because some of the bigger boats really can't get into the shallow stuff. It's a good day. It's windy out on the big waters, but I'm kayaking in a small protected bay and working a creek channel. The tide is starting to move. I've spotted small schools of bait fish moving in and feeding on the surface. In a few minutes, I look around the kayak and there's bigger bait fish feeding on the surface. That's a great sign because I know that the predator fish won't be far behind. You know that breeze and the warm air is so nice? I almost fell asleep casting. But a fish woke me up. It looks like it's another spotted trout. Nice trout. Look how beautifully colored they are. They are gorgeous. Look at how brilliant they are. This guy's not done fighting yet, but I'm gonna lift it in the boat just so you can have a look at it. They are so much fun. And they're throughout, you know, Florida, both the East Coast and the West Coast. You know, I look at these fish, look how brilliant they are. They do look a lot like our trout back up north. But you know, the funny thing, they're not a trout. They're actually part of the weak fish family, but they're called the spotted sea trout because of their looks. So this guy would probably be just under keeper size. Got to be careful with those trebles, especially if the fish isn't completely fought out. And he should just fall off in a second. I'm going to try to release him close to the water. Look at gorgeous fish. There he goes. You know, this brings back memories. When I was a youngster, and all I had was a canoe. Kayaks weren't very popular back then. Oh, he's gonna throw the hook. He's gonna throw the hook. He's gonna throw the hook. Is he gonna throw the hook? Is he gonna throw the hook? Oh, 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 oh. nice spotted trout. Anyway, back then, kayaks weren't really that popular. It was more um, canoes. Look at nice spotted trout. You know, the one thing I like about these fish is that they have really wide shoulders right here. They're great eating, but we're releasing all of our sedan. Look at this one has two fangs. Just before I hooked this fish, I could see bait fish busting on the surface. So I kind of make a, made a cast backhand over my head. And sure enough, there were uh, trout there feeding on them. You gotta be very careful here. Sometimes when you unhook one hook, the other hook gets hooked up. But this one's gonna be okay. He should just fall off in a second. Beautiful spotted trout fishing on the flats here. Come on. There we go. Now, you know, for this kind of fishing, it does help to have a rod that's at least seven feet long. So this particular rod is seven feet long. It's a medium heavy action, because sometimes you can hook some pretty big fish. I hooked a fish earlier. I don't know what it was, but it just started ripping drag out. So it helps to go a little bit heavy. And I'm using a 20 pound fluorocarbon leader because number one, the leader helps is stiff. So it helps for the lure not getting caught up in the line when you cast because I'm using uh, braided, there's a fish. Oh, lost him right there. July is one of the best times to fish the larger bays in Florida. Since the weather is hot, wind's moderate, water temperature's warm, and there's lots of food for the different species of flats fish. 
July is also ICAST time, the biggest American fishing tackle trade show in the country. I had a chance to check it out and inspect the newest fishing kayaks on the market. I'm amazed by the slick design of modern fishing kayaks. They look cool, they have very comfortable, easy to install and adjustable seats, but more importantly, they are fisherman friendly. As far as I'm concerned, having a propulsion system that can be easily installed or removed and adjusted on demand is a real asset. That's where a good rudder system and controls is essential so you can control direction with just the touch of a lever. Fishing friendly also means having lots of room for spare rods, tackle boxes and accessories. And this kayak has it all. And when you sit for hours, being able to add an additional support for your lumbar in the seat sleeve is true creature comfort. This kayak even has a handy strap to hold your knife when you need it to cut lines and knots and a handy pouch for your cell phone or walkie talkie and even a dry bag storage. For transporting the kayaks, there's no nylon straps that deteriorate in the sun. Solid grab handles make moving the kayak safe and easy. A good fishing kayak is stable whether you sit or stand. That's where a partial tunnel haul is a must. Now, if you're looking for a kayak that you don't need to pedal or paddle, you can now get an electric powered one. Yes, this is still considered a kayak and is state of the art with a swivel seat, a built-in transom for the electric, custom flooring, and a compartment to store a full-size deep cycle battery. Now we're getting serious. ICAST was busy, lots of stuff to see, and some awesome kais to check out close up. But I'd rather be out on the water catching fish. It's kind of interesting being this close to a trout that's splashing. One thing you gotta be careful is that that hook doesn't fly out of its mouth and come right back at you. So I wanna make sure this guy's fought out. Actually, I'm gonna put my anchor in. We've got a little one pound anchor that works really well when you get into choppy water. We don't have a lot of chop, but it is windy right now. So I know I've got my pliers here somewhere. Come here, you beautiful trout, you. It's gonna hold that with the pliers. So if it wants to shake and thrash, it won't uh, throw the hook at me. See those beautiful spots? Very pristine fish. Okay, now, this is where you gotta take your time. Don't wanna hurt the fish. Don't wanna get a hook in your hand. Okay, the hook is out. Beautiful trout. Oh, that water's nice and refreshing. Come on, you. They take off so slowly. They don't take off like a pike. So, you know, I gotta check my leader every time. I'm out about, uh, I'm gonna say half a kilometer, maybe more. I'm fishing in the middle of this big bay and it's not just fishing anywhere. I've got grass flats to the back of me and in front of me is open water and I'm trying to fish about the three and a half to four and a half foot of water. Because once you get into five feet, it's all a sand bottom. Once you get behind me, it's all grass. And the way this tide is going out right now, the fish seem to be right on the edges. Besides saltwater fishing, I also had a chance to fish out of the electric power kayak for largemouth bass in a freshwater lake. Talk about luxury. I thought lake power and propulsion system was cool, but running an electric, this kayak is like a miniature bass boat. Look at nice bass. So I've got a river in the boat. River, you stay in the kayak, okay? And I've got Mulligan that swam out from shore and she was doing donuts around the boat. That was so cute. Oh, got off. Oh, it's okay. I've lost lots of fish over the last 40 years. You know, I'm fishing a small lake and I just started fishing an inlet and uh, I'm using a wacky worm rig and just casting along the shores in the deeper water. I've been experimenting because I, I'm not sure how deep this uh, lake is. So I've got my sonar and I've been uh, watching it. It's anywhere from eight to nine feet. So I've been trying to cast the shorelines and I cast at this point just out of this bay and I had that nice bass on. <sighs> yeah. Well, I got excited the river story. I put it into high gear. Oh, <laughs> hi Mulligan. Gotta love dogs. Careful, Mulligan, he doesn't bite you. I used to have one dog that I used to take fishing. 
Now I've got two, and I can't fit them both in the kayak at one time. So I tried putting River in the car. Oh, I can see why they got off. Very lightly hooked. Don't get off. I want to show you. Come here. Ah, show you what I mean about lightly hooked. Can you see? It's just on a little bit of skin right there. Look, that hook just came out. No wonder I lost the other ones. That's a nice, it's about a two and a half pound largemouth from the kayak here. River, you want to smell? That's the smell of success, sweetie. Yeah, nice bass, hey. Oh, she's doing the full inspection. Yeah, she says, yeah, it's a fish. Okay, so I'm gonna let it go. And it's gonna probably take off pretty quick. Good. So I was saying, what I did, I had mulligan in the kayak first. And I thought I'd leave River in the truck, and I, I'm not too far from the truck. I can still see it back there near the bush. And all I could hear was crying, crying, crying. So she wanted out. So we let her out. And it's funny, because I had um, mulligan in the kayak. If she doesn't jump in and try to get in the kayak out, you know, away from shore. So I went close to shore, mulligan got out, she climbed in. So that's one thing, you know, when dogs are used to being with you. And you know what? They're great companions. I couldn't, I don't think another person in this kayak would do very well, but one dog is perfect, eh, River? She goes, yep, perfect for me and you. Okay, so let me just get back on track, because that fish was out in the open. Let's see if we can get another one, okay? Yeah, yeah. Closed captioning brought to you by Leguano, natural barefoot technology for every adventure. Nice trout. Man, you know when they're a little bit bigger, they just uh, fight so much harder. Beautiful. Come on. I'm trying to get him to just thrash a little bit to get tired out. Because I don't want him to thrash when I grab that lure. And I can hear that croaking sound that he's making. Come on. He's only got one fang. There. Pretty trout. I could catch these things all day long. Wait a second, I am catching these all day long. Look at, pretty weak fish. Fishing from a kayak, just having fun, slamming fish all afternoon long in the hot, sunny weather. Being cool, you know, gorgeous fish. Okay, I'm gonna get the hooks out. Okay, man, still got spunk left. Come on, slow down. I just wanna get the hooks out of you and let you go. One here. One here. This guy's only got one fang. And put him right there. Look, beautiful, weak fish. There it goes, gone. Okay, back to casting. Check my gear, check my tackle. Look at, isn't that, a, no wonder they're hitting it. Look at the colors of this lure. Isn't that pretty? It's got that nice chartreuse bag, little red beady eyes. Silver sides, a little bit of a white belly. I mean, if I was a fish, I'd hit that thing. Perfect. This fish hit just as I was about to lift my lure out of the water. It actually sprayed me with water. It's a nice chunky fish. He's not a monster, but boy, did he hit aggressively. He's even trying to jump. Wait a second. Spotted sea trout don't jump. They just thrash on the surface. Yeah, this is a nice, nice thick fish. Are you done? So I don't get hurt here. Beautiful. There, oh yeah, he's nice and fat. Look at that, beautiful colors. Nice thick fish, got a good belly. Nice shoulders. Is he gonna thrash? Don't thrash too much. There. See if I can hold them. I'm using the pliers, which is kind of handy. You know, you can appreciate how beautiful these guys are. And they, they are very aggressive for their size. That's why there's so much sport. A lot of people will use like a popping, a popping cork and they'll use a shrimp because they love shrimp or they'll catch white bait. But I have just as much fun just casting the lures. That's funny, look at, I got that one hook out and then he just got clipped by the other one. And he's sitting right here. Can, can I say hi to him? Come here, come on, there you go. That water's pretty dark. Yeah, so these fish don't seem to be really engine shy. You know, a lot of times when we're fishing out of the boat, you'll hook them right beside the motor, even when the motor's running. 
with the kayak, of course, you're so quiet. So because that wind has picked up, I've been putting the anchor in because the wind is taking me to where I'm casting. Obviously, I'm casting with the wind because I'm getting better casts. But the problem then is that when you try to reel and twitch it, your line is constantly slack. So it really helps to have like a one pound anchor, which is what I have. Cast, you know, maybe 10, 15 casts in one area and then pull the anchor up, which is very easy and move a little bit. And now for one of my favorite times of day, trout cleaning, preparing, and eating. First, I start by scaling the trout. I like to prepare my sea trout whole on the grill. Once they're scaled, I run the knife down the back and rip out the dorsal rays. Next, I pull out the anal fin. This way, I eliminate a lot of those small bones. Once that's done, I proceed to make a cut along the belly and remove the entrails. I rinse the fish off and lay it down on its side. Make a few cuts along the outside of the body to make sure the seasonings will add more flavor as it's cooking. The trout are ready for their seasoning and cooking. I love to use simple seasoning when I'm doing sea trout on the grill that includes roasted pepper and garlic with a hint of salt and pepper. Sea trout have such a mild taste that you don't want to overpower it with too much seasonings. I season the fish completely on the outside and even in the body cavity and then place it on a grill mat that has been smeared with a little butter for added flavor. The seasoned trout are placed gently on the grill mat and allowed to cook for about 20 minutes between 250 and 350 Fahrenheit. I check to see how the fish are cooking and gently turn them over. They're allowed to cook on the other side for another 10 minutes and they are ready to place on the platter. What a great way to finish off the day enjoying fresh grilled spotted sea trout. One day I wandered out on the sea Searching for something that really found me I didn't know it, but it drew me to it Soon I was full of its passion in me I'm Italo Labigna. 40 years I've fished the world and have learned it's not just about catching the fish, the size of the fish or the numbers. It's about appreciating every sunrise and sunset, the smell of the sea, savoring the culture and the fish with friends. Here's the catch. It's the total experience. Presented by Bear Reels, versatile, precision, handcrafted hybrid center pins. Seabreeze boats, tame the oceans. Raymarine Electronics, Raymarine, simply superior. <laughs>